Good morning. Welcome to St. Giles live stream. It's so good to have all of y'all see us this morning. Uh, it's wonderful that you've been able to tune in with us and we are going to worship together. I want to point out where we are, uh, not in this whole pandemic thing. We'll talk more about that later. Um, but uh, where we are in the uh, Christian year, you'll see that uh, we have different colored stoles on and then there's a white one back here for Easter, a, a pyramid on the pulpit. Uh, we are in the sixth Sunday of Easter. We have one more Sunday of Easter, and then we have Pentecost, and that's when the Holy Spirit comes. Um, but the Holy Spirit's with us already and has been with us all along. So are we recognizing it? Are we seeking it out? That's what we're doing during this time. Also, on the Christian calendar, this Thursday is Ascension. Uh, this is when Jesus goes back to heaven goes back to be with the Father, and today Jesus tells us, I am with the Father, and I am with you, and you are with God. So, with that sense of seeking God's presence, let us come into our worship, but worship also includes announcements, so I want to make the announcement uh, that uh, session will be meeting tomorrow night, and after that we will have uh, more decisions about how we're going to continue with worship uh, as different uh, parts of the economy are opening up uh, following uh, being closed down for these many weeks now. Uh, we will put out an email announcement about that this week following the session meeting. If you're not receiving emails from us, if you're not getting this bulletin, uh, please let us know. And I know you might be thinking, well, I wouldn't be on the live stream if I wasn't getting it. But we found out Ken Alderman. Hi, Ken. And hi, Daniel. Happy graduation, 2020 graduate. Congratulations. Um, uh, they weren't on the email list. So anyone else that's in uh, on the live stream and would like to receive the bulletin by email and other announcements, 
such as our plans going forward, please let us know. Uh, you can write it to office at stgilesfl.org. Uh, also, um, we have uh, changes all around us. Changes are happening, and always for the better. It depends on how we perceive them. Let us worship God. Let us go to God in our opening prayer. Loving God, in whom we live and move and have our being, help us to choose life in you, that we may keep the commands of Jesus, follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and witness to the hope that is within us, sharing Christ's love in the world. Amen. Will you join me now in our responsive call to worship? Some have worshipped unknown gods in temples made by human hands. We worship the living God, the maker of heaven and earth. Some have searched the whole world to find direction in their lives. We worship the one who is here, revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Let us worship God. Will you join us in singing our first hymn, Come Thou Almighty King, and you will see the lyrics on the screen so you can sing along with us. for God. You what? Well, the other puppets told me this was the house of God, so where is he? I'm looking. Okay, uh, that's kind of an expression. Let, let me explain a little bit. Uh, okay, I'll listen. Well, back in the uh, really old times, people thought there were many gods, and they even built little statues and things of animals and people and stuff like that to pretend that that was God. Wait, wait a minute. They, they put animals like they were gods? Yeah. You mean like cats? Well, yeah, actually some did. That's weird. Yeah, I agree. But uh, Moses and Abraham taught us, you know, that uh, there was one God and, and that we shouldn't make idols. And, and, and uh, then a little later, uh, uh, some people like, like Jonah had to learn that God wasn't just in one place. Well, wait a minute. He's not just here? Well, no, a lot of the people, the ancient Israelites, thought that uh, God was only in the temple, and, and uh, he tried to run away from him. He found out that you couldn't run away from God, that he wasn't just in one place. So 
if he's not here in the church, where is he? Well, actually, he's everywhere, anywhere that you go. Okay, um, well then why do people say that he lives in your heart? Um, well, that's an expression. It doesn't mean he's actually in your heart. It, it, it means that uh, we kind of uh, see God and, and behave in, in ways that um, uh, are like God wants us to, that, that we obey and we love him, and so we say that he li lives in our heart. What are you doing? Well, I just thought I would clean myself up a little. <sighs> Not in church. Oh, sorry. Okay. So anyway, when we say that God loves us and that he lives in our heart, it's the same thing, and that we love God, that he is living in our hearts. Oh, okay. Maybe we should draw up a Reynolds agreement. No, 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 it's, it's not like that. Besides, we don't rent space to God. We give our hearts to God, so he's the owner. Oh, cool. Bye, guys. Just like a cat, Carter needs to take a bath right in the middle of an important message, right? <laughs> Later on in the service, we will have a time for prayers of the people, and Jake will lead that. Uh, we, until that time, we will be collecting prayers. You can comment on the live stream with any prayer requests that you have. Someone is writing those down, and they'll give them to Jake so that he can include them in the prayer that will come after the sermon. Um, we are aware of a lot of prayer requests that have been coming in throughout the week, um, but like we always say, we'd rather hear it 12 times than no times. So please let us know anything that you would like us to be in prayer for. At this time, we're going to go to God with a confession. I'm going to pray, and I invite you to uh, open your hearts to confess our sins together. Let us pray. Living God, we confess that we look for the living among the dead. You made the heavens and the earth, and we worship our own devices. You send your spirit to guide us, but we try to find our own way. Forgive us. Give us new life. Renew the promise of our baptism. Make us ready to receive the life that death cannot destroy. We pray these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, remember this most important news and information. No matter what you are seeing and hearing in the world, on the television, or as you read the newspaper, or read the news online, or get the news through email, the most important news you can receive is this. God loves you. God loves us. God hears our prayers and forgives our sins, no matter how big or small. All our sins are forgiven today and every day. All glory to God. Alleluia. Amen. Joining us this morning for our anthem, we have a special guest, Gladys Heather Berga? Berga. Welcome, Heather.
Thank you for that beautiful musical message, Eddie. And Mary. <laughs> Our passages today are the uh, traditional for this uh, year A, the sixth Sunday of Easter. And we're going to hear from Acts chapter 17 and then John, uh, the middle part of chapter 14. The same chapter where Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. First from Acts. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and he said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through your city today and I looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar and with the inscription, to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines that are made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to us mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made every single nation to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence, and he set the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God, and even perhaps grope for God, and find him, though indeed he is not far from each and every one of us. For in him we live and move and we have our very being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring then, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone that the deity is an image formed by the art and imagination of mere mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising that man from the dead. Paul was a great preacher and missionary and teacher, theologian, traveler. Paul, he did a lot of stuff. Thank God for Paul. John 14, verses 15 through 21. Jesus says to you and to me, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, another comforter, another counselor. He's going to give you another helper to be with you forever. And this is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him because he already abides in you and he will be with you. I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you orphaned, Jesus tells us. I am coming to you and in a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Let me try that just a different way, change the preposition around. On that day, you will know that I am with my Father, and you are with me, and I am with you. Let's try another preposition. I am beside my Father, and you are beside me. And, and I am beside you, Jesus tells us. Don't get confused by some of these prepositions. 
This is about a God who accompanies us so closely that it's just like he's a part of us, in us, in our heart. Jesus continues, They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them, and I will reveal myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation of our hearts today be pleasing to you. Paul says that we will, we will seek God and we will even grope for God. Do you feel like you're groping for God sometimes? Do you feel like you're reaching and struggling and trying your best to get to a place where you know God's presence in your life? Do you feel like sometimes life is too much? Maybe during these times you feel too isolated. Or maybe you feel not isolated enough because things are opening up, aren't they? How does that make us feel? A lot of us, it gives us some anxiety. Makes us feel fearful of what's going to happen. So a few years ago on a dark and stormy cold night. Actually, it wasn't that stormy. The wind was kind of down. And it wasn't cold because it was in Tampa Bay. Um, but it was dark while well, it was nighttime. There was a little bit of was a half moon out so we could see some. But when I say we, it was just it was just me. I've talked to you before about night watch on the barge in Tampa Bay. They would send me out there, and I we would move crane barges at night because they needed them in place in the morning, tied up in the spot they needed to be, and they used them right up until 5 or 6 p.m. And we would have to move them sometimes 7, 10, 14 miles at night. And a tug only goes so fast especially when it's got a crane barge attached to the front of it. And on the barge, there was the crane, and then a little further up, there was a, a house, not a pilot house, because there's no pilot there on the barge, but the house where they kept all the extra materials, and it blocked the view of the captain, so someone had to go up in front of the house and sit there on a ledge about this wide between the house and the water, about 10 or 12 feet below. And that someone was me, and so I got to go out there and it's times like that you think, how did I get here? What's going on? Was this some fault of mine? What did I do wrong, God? It's dark and cold and stormy. Well, it feels that way, but it was just dark. But it was lonely out there. I had the radio. I would call the captain. I was just making sure that, you know, I was his eyes out on the front of the barge. So it was an important responsibility to make sure that nobody out there would get, you know, harmed, uh, that the barge would not run aground. When have you had times in your life and you say, how did I get here? Did you seek God's presence? Did you stop and listen the way that Paul suggests we do the way that Jesus is suggesting we do to realize that God has been present with us all along. Let's put a pin in that barge story. Do you feel orphaned today in some other way? There are hundreds of millions, maybe even a billion people around the planet that feel orphaned today because of this pandemic. And you know who I'm talking about. It's sports fans. People that watch spectator sports. It's horrible what's happening. I didn't know we could live so long without spectator sports. ESPN didn't inform me of that. If you want to know somebody we need to pray for, it's all those sportscasters on ESPN. I thought one of them was going to cry just eight or ten days into this thing. He said, I, I really miss people playing sports and me watching it and talking about it. We've done okay. I haven't really 
been able to watch anything anyway, but so I didn't even turn the TV on until just a couple of days ago. I flipped it on and I said, I, I wonder what they're doing because all they're doing is talking about the same stuff on the news channels. And I've watched Netflix, the whole thing, like all of it. <laughs> so I flipped to the golf channel and they were showing the Solheim Cup. I'm like, oh, is that on right now? You guys know what the Solheim Cup is? It's like the Ryder Cup, but it's women. It's the best LPGA tour and ladies European tour golfers and they're playing against each other from 2019. So I'm like, well, this was last year. So I switched to the other sports channel. Do you know what they were doing? They called themselves e-athletes. It was four guys. Uh, between them, they had uh, five beer bellies and four bad facial hairs and one, just one man bun. So that was it, just the one. And, and they play Madden football, and they, and they had people watching them. Well, it wasn't really people. It was one guy's granddad who was pulling for him. And they were televising this. What? They were televising video game competitors, e-athletes. I'm sorry. Not video gamers. But So I switched down to the next channel, and there was some live sports. I said, what are these guys doing? It was four guys, and they were, they were wearing face masks because of pandemic. Of course, so I'm like, oh, good. There's more than one person in the room. This is going to be great. I'm going to see something. They had on shirts. Um, they look kind of like bowling shirts. I was like, I'll watch it. I'll watch bowling. It's not my first thing, but whatever. Um, and they had lots of sponsors. Uh, Johnsonville Brats was on there uh, and, and like 25 other sponsors. I said, what are the guys doing? And then they finally got a long view of it, and they were playing cornhole. Yeah, it was the cornhole tournament for North America. Or something for or for Johnsonville I don't know cornhole I went back to the Solheim Cup <laughs> watched a couple of holes that was um we feel orphaned in so many ways and you know we could laugh at this sports thing but we, we feel orphaned in other ways during this time and Jesus uses the word the, the Greek word was Orphanos. So it really was orphan, and it means without a father. He said, I am going to go back to God. Uh, first, I'm going to die, but I'm going to be raised again. And then I'm going to ascend. And that's what happens this Thursday. We celebrate it the ascension of Jesus back up to heaven to be with God. But he says, I'm not going to leave you alone. And the disciples are looking at him like, But we feel like you're going to leave us alone. Don't abandon us, Jesus. Why would you bring us this far? And then abandon us. And Jesus says, I am not leaving you. But I am sending another. Actually, God is sending another. My Father sends the Comforter. That's the King James Version. The Comforter. The Counselor. The version we read today says Advocate. The Holy Advocate. The person, what it means, it's, it's parakletos. And it's one of the Greek words for the Holy Spirit. And it means someone that comes and stands there for you, with you, beside you, in you, even within you, when you need them. Especially in a time of trial, in a time of difficulty, Parakletos, the advocate, comes, sent from God, and tells you you are not alone. You have never been alone. I have always been with you. And you are right where you need to be. And when you're sitting on the front of the barge on a dark night all alone, you don't feel like you have company especially the company of a loving father, of a loving God. We forget so easily. In fact, our memory tells us it was cold and stormy when it wasn't. Our memory does these funny things. It was balmy. Just light breezes. And you were right where you were supposed to be. And today, you are right where you are supposed to be. And God is beside you, with you. God is in you, so close that you feel the fellowship of this other. You are a beloved child of God.
listen. Listen for the presence of the Spirit in your life this week, wherever you find yourself, especially those times when you feel alone. Pray and listen, and you will know God's presence. Jesus made that promise. Amen. So we come to our prayers of the people, the pastoral prayer. Some of you have sent in your requests. We also know of some folks that have had a difficult week. And we will be praying that there will even be a time for silent prayer. Let us pray together. We offer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we come to you under his name, in his name. The one who lives and reigns forever. The one who is with you now and prays for us in heaven. God, we pray for the church. Let your spirit of truth abide in us so that we may keep your commandments and bear witness to the power of your love, just as the Apostle Paul did. God, we pray for the whole earth. Bless and keep the world that you have made a gracious gift from the creator of all. God, let it not be destroyed by human hands. Almighty God, we pray for all nations. Bring everyone into your saving purpose, as we know is your will. Show us that we are indeed one family in you, the children of a common ancestor. God, we pray for our community here in Orange Park and all the surrounding communities. By your spirit, make us always ready to share the faith and hope that is in us and to show your love to our neighbors. God, through Christ, we pray for loved ones today. Remember those who are tested and tried. Do not let them slip. Guard their lives. Keep them in your steadfast love. Let them know your presence so close to them that it is in their heart. God, we pray for Cheryl McDavid and for Trish Keskinen. We pray for Brenda Cohn. We pray for Mary Luke's son's family, who is grieving a loss. God, we pray for Sharon Kramer's friend, Dick, who is slowly recovering from surgery. God, we pray for Jelaine Ressler. God, bless Jelaine. Give her strength. Give her courage, Lord. God, we pray for Bill Harrell, who fell and has broken his, his hip, his upper femur bone. God, be with him as he goes to, hopefully today, to uh, rehab. And be with Irene and his family as they support him. God, we pray for Judy Barrett. We pray for Mary Ellen Olson's friend, Debbie Moracek and Ellen Gray. God, be with, be with Steve Cohn as he takes care of his beloved friend of following gallbladder surgery this past week. Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones, not just in the last few days or weeks, but this, this last year or so, God. Be with the Jenskas, Suzanne and the Foster family. Be with those, the family of Vern O'Reilly, be with Tracy Wood and her brother. They lost Jay and Sharon. Be with the family of Madeline and Luda Haas. God, comfort us. You promised us to send the comforter. We need the comforter now. God, ease the anxieties of this nation and this world as we sort of reopen. God, keep those who want to jump ahead from jumping too soon and keep those who want to, to stay in lockdown to 
keep them comforted, allay their fears. God, give us wisdom. Lord, there are individuals and situations on our hearts that we raise to you now in silent prayer. receive these prayers and continue your mighty work among us through Jesus Christ, our living Lord, the one who sends us the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the one who also taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is the first and last verse. These two verses of number 376, Love Divine, All Loves Excel. go out into the world with the spirit of truth encouraging you to seek to grope when necessary to hear God's voice don't let regrets of the past bother you may God protect you from fears of the future so that you may live today with Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit amen